I think that we all have our favorites. I know at least I do, the, the books that you go back to again and again. And um, both of these ladies are on, on the list. Um, Honor Splendor is one of my all-time favorites. <laughs> and of course, Knight in Shining Armor. <laughs> Um, do you find that when you meet your readers, is, is there one book or a set of books that they come back to again and again to want to talk about, or a character for you that, that you're constantly having to answer questions about because readers just can't let go? Um, actually, it varies. Um, to me, I, I like Kissa. Uh, my piano is my favorite. And it always surprises me that other people say, no, 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 it's something else. Uh, they like other ones in some of the books. I don't even remember what I <laughs> And I say they read it over and over again. And I thanks him the Kindle. I've had to Kindle my own books and reread them. <laughs> um, who was that? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, since I got here this morning, it's been seven different books, <laughs> so, which is really cool, you know. Uh, the Gift, Mercy, yes. Heartbreaker, uh, The Bride. Uh, yeah. The Bride. <laughs> and that was fun to write. I really liked that. Um, so I don't really think there's a favorite favorite. Ransom seems to be the, the last yeah. historical that they liked. Well, well, speaking of, of historical versus your contemporary and, and more romantic suspense, uh -huh. you really did make a change in, in your writing and you decided to move up to more contemporary writing. Can you talk about that change? Sure, but I need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> We've got, yes, she's, she's recovering from pneumonia right now, yeah. so, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had this story idea. I went to, I'll make this short, I went to England with my sister, Cookie who is 10 years older, and you can't go anywhere unless you go to Mass every day. It's a rule. So when we got there, we were so excited. When we got to London, none, we hadn't slept at all, and they told us that there was a little Catholic church a mile away, and we took a cab and got there. I don't know if any of you ever saw the movie Sister Act. The priest sounded and looked just like this guy. And of course, I was punchy anyway. And, um, so he starts giving the sermon, and he talks about the prodigal son. And right when he gets to the punch of the reason, he just stopped. And then he said, but I know you know. And I thought, OK. And then he told another story, got to the big punchline or the lesson, and said, and I'm not making this up, but I know you know I know you know. <laughs> Third time, he did it again and said, I know you know, I know that you know. And I leaned over to Cookie and said, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I made her laugh, which is, so she left. She got up and moved to another pew. <laughs> <laughs> so I, really, so I happened to be looking around. I was very sleep deprived. And I saw this velvet curtain that hid the confessional. And I thought, what if? And that started Heartbreaker. You know, mm -hmm. so I thought how cool it would be to tell a sin you haven't committed yet. And that led to the story. And I'm going to go to purgatory for it <laughs> because I didn't pay attention. But uh, so I kept trying to put it in historical context. In fact, we talked about it, Linda and I, it wouldn't work. It had to be contemporary, and that's why. And then he was a Buchanan, and it's like the Montgomery's and, and Jude's. You, yeah. you have to do the whole family. You can't leave them out. So <laughs> that's what I did. And, and just like uh, Julie has, has switched back and forth between genres, you also are known for writing in almost every time period, even the 19, like early 1930s and, and things like that, where nobody else really is writing that, all the way through contemporary, all the past to uh, medieval times. Um, what keeps you, how do you decide where you're going to go next with your next story? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I decide. It's like I see something in my head and I know where it is and what time period it's set in. And um, I just kind of see it. And that's what I write about. And then I start researching it. 
and study it and write about it then. One of the re reoccurring themes in a lot of your novels are um, is is reincarnation. They, they, your characters don't necessarily get it right first time around, um, and so I, I'm thinking Remembrance, of course, is kind of one of the first times that it really hit me. They don't get it right, so they just try again and again to to get it right. Um, and then we, you have a book coming out called True Love, and again, you it, it has a paranormal slant to it because you have a ghost who never quite got it right, so he's he's hanging around to get it right. Um, why why have you chosen to add some of this this paranormal flair to your to your stories? I'm fascinated with the idea of what you would do if you had to do your life over again. What kind of changes would you make, and why have you made decisions? What makes you like something that someone else doesn't? Uh, why do I like medieval Elizabethan and not Vikings? And it made me think about things. Of, is it past lives? Um, can you change things if you had a chance? So I've done the Summer House books and changed those. <laughs> and people are uh, liking those. They're asking me to do more. Linda's saying yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's set my mind to working on that. I just like the idea of why uh, things are different, why you like something, and why you're like you are. Did it have to do something in the past? And it fascinates me. Well, one thing um, that I do is when, when I'm going through something emotionally, um, I reach for a romance novel, and I know a lot of women here do the same thing. You kind of want that escape. Um, and, and these two ladies' books always provide that. Um, so I want to ask, what's your escape? When the world gets too much, where do you go? Romance. Um, if I was misquoted a long time ago, when I was writing historicals, I never read them. I read contemporaries, and now that I'm writing a contemporary series, I read historicals. And Jude's one of my favorite authors. Um, you know, we find each other. I've got a book by Nora, Whiskey Beach. I haven't started yet, but I hear it's really good. It's, <laughs> I read everything. Um, and I do a lot of nonfiction research, which I have to do, so I just, I don't know. Are you, do you also escape into a romance novel? No, never read them. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much of a busting holiday. I start saying, why did you put this chapter here? Why did you do this? No, this line is all wrong and this character's wrong. No, it just makes me crazy. It's, uh, I don't like it. To, to, I can't do it. Uh, I can read murder mysteries. I mostly don't read uh, fiction just because uh, that's what I do for a living. So I read nonfiction a lot. Love anything. I like biographies. I read them. And uh, Linda keeps me busy with things. Telling me what's that new one you, about the yes? That uh, book you had me. That one called Daring Greatly. Yeah, Daring Greatly. Yeah. She tells me. Linda's my editor. Been my editor <coughs> off and on, mostly on for thirty some years. <laughs> Well, just like we've talked about True Love coming out from you, it's the beginning of the Nantucket series. I know that Julie Garwood also has a book coming out. I'm calling her by her full name. She's like, call me Julie. I'm like, I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and that's Hotshot. And I love, I, I checked out the, uh, the hero's last name, McBain, yeah. Saving Grace. Is that, are we yeah, getting another McBain? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's a real fun character for me. He's uh, Finn McBain. And, and tell me, and, and Peyton's his heroine. Tell yes. me a little bit about Peyton. Well, Finn really is a hot shot. He wins three gold medals at the Olympics. He's, you know, he's a, everything he does, he does extremely well. And she's very ordinary, she thinks, and screws up a lot, <laughs> like a lot of us do. And uh, they're just met for one another. And there's a mystery in it, a little one. I don't know, it's fun. It is fun. Yeah. And that's going to be in August. Mm -hmm. and, and when does True Love come out? Um, well, it's supposed to be the 4th of July weekend, but I think they moved it up to July 2nd or 1st or something like that. Okay, excellent. Yeah. And, and in that one, I actually I got to read 
True Love, and it's very exciting because it's it's Jared Montgomery, and he's the Jared Montgomery in this one. He's a, he's a very he's a very um, interesting guy because he's he's a famous architect, right. and and your heroine she is a not famous architect, so it's interesting to see them. <laughs> right, she's in awe of him. Yeah. Tell Which doesn't know. last for long. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's a little bit too tough for that. That was a great, fun book to, to write. I really, really enjoyed writing it. Some books are very difficult, and some you want to throw down the garbage disposal <laughs> after three chapters, but that one was a great fun. And there's a, a man in it, Caleb, who I deeply love Caleb. I want to run off with Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, loved him. Well, now that you've opened the door and said there's books you want to throw down the garbage disposal, what what, what, is, what, is, <laughs> what was a book for you that was um, very easy to write that you really connected with, and then what's one that you maybe struggled with a little bit? Uh, the easiest one I ever wrote was Night in Shining Armor, believe it or not. Uh, I went up into mountains of New Mexico, Pecos, New Mexico, high mountain desert, and stayed there for three and a half months, didn't see anyone. I had a secretary who brought me groceries on uh, Friday, and I walked uh, a hike up at 11,000 feet altitude wow. and just wrote. <laughs> and everything in the book clicked. Everything was right, no struggle, whatever, with it. Uh, and that was uh, easy. I had trouble with uh, the one with uh, Amanda Calden in it. Can't remember which book that was. Awakening. Mm -hmm. I remember that. I had trouble with that because I outlined it extensively beforehand, and I felt like I had to follow my outline, and that kind of dampened my uh, uh, enthusiasm about it. I had trouble with that one. I'm having trouble with the one I'm with right now. It's called uh, Prince Charming, and it's with the uh, Prince from Lanconia, uh, country I made up and wrote two books about, and uh, he and the young woman in it are so perfect that they're kind of annoying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I sent them back in time and stripped them of all their uh, uh, perfection. And uh, so that's, that's been more fun. Put them in 1806 and put them in Regency clothes what they think are really fun. That's, that's been good. It's been easier since then. <laughs> what about you? What is a book that, that you just that flowed for you and then one that just stalled for you? For the Roses was uh, and the Bride were real easy. I just it was like somebody was, I don't know, telling me the story as I wrote it. Uh, Hot Shot was hard, but I had a lot of family stuff going on that kind of interfered with it. I am the opposite of Jude. I understand you have to have quiet. I have to have bedlam. Or I <laughs> no, really, I do. I'm one of seven, and we used to do our homework around the dining room table, so I learned early to block out noise. And if I can't block it out, I'm, you know, I can't work. So um, I usually, if I'm there alone, which is rare, I have the television on blaring. Do you remember when O.J. Simpson was in that white car driving? <laughs> My television was as far away as you are. It was on all day, and I found out about it that night. <laughs> so, that tells you. But it's blaring, and that's good. Anyway, that's how I work. And, uh, but trauma, family trauma, you know, if somebody's sick or all that, that messes with me. Otherwise, the more the merrier. I have to tell you, my granddaughter, this hot shot took longer than any of the others. And I have a five-year-old granddaughter who likes to put her hands on her hips. And she said, Grandma, when are you going to finish that book? And I said, <laughs> really, she sounded Southern. And I said, any time to say a prayer, at which point this child bowed her head and said a prayer. I loved it. But she didn't understand the literal. But anyway, <laughs> that one was hard, yeah. But I like the end result. <laughs>